8.1 similar figures. This is a new chapter and we're talking about something called similar figures, not congruent figures. So what similar means is that they're exactly the same shape, but they're different sizes. So it's either been dilated or reduced in size. So these are what's called similar figures. There's a new symbol for similar. Similar is just a single swoop line instead of having the equal sign underneath. So recall that the congruent symbol or the equal symbol is with two lines underneath it. But for similar, it's just a single loop symbol. So in similar figures, that means things like this, similar pictures, the ratios or the fraction of the lengths of their corresponding sides are equal. The fractions are equal, not the lengths themselves. So is six equal to nine? No, but is the fraction from six to nine equal to eight to 12? That's the question. So here's the first example. Find the ratio or the fraction of the corresponding side lengths. Hint, they should all be equal when simplified. So let's start with AB and DE. So if we compare AB to DE, AB is six, DE is nine. Those both divide by three. Six divided by three is two. Nine divided by three is three. So we can see that there is a reduction from the larger one to the smaller one by a factor of two thirds. Let's see if that applies to all three sides. So now let's do CB to FE. CB is eight, FE is 12. 8 and 12 both divide by 2, so that becomes 4 over 6, but that divides again. 4 over 6 divides uh, by 2, so 2 over 3. Oh, good. We're getting a consistent, consistent ratio. Now we just need to check the third side, so let's do AC compared to DF. AC is 10, DF is 15. Both of those divide by five, 10 divided by five is two, 15 divided by five is three. Oh, good. So the question is, are they similar? Yes. These two figures are similar. This, this symbol means similar to each other. Um, the bit larger one has been reduced by two thirds to get to the smaller one. Example number two, triangle RST is similar to XYZ. So these two shapes are not exactly the same size. They are similar in size. One of them has been either increased or decreased. It says find the scale factor. How many times larger is RST than XYZ? Scale factor is written with a K. K represents scale factor. So we're looking for how many times larger is the bigger one to the smaller one. So if that's the case, you just choose two sides that are friendly to you. It doesn't matter which two sides as long as they correspond. So I'm going to choose RS and compare it to XY. You could divide them in the other direction as well to get the scale factor, but if we're trying to go from larger to, we're trying to figure out how much larger, you want to start with your larger picture on top, your larger value on top. So in this case, it's going to be a 20 divided by 12. We can reduce that in half, 10 divided by six. Again, five divided by three. So it's five thirds larger than X, Y, Z, uh, which is approximately, if you turned it into a decimal, is approximately 1.67 times larger. So we can say K is approximately 1.67. It's gaining almost a little bit more than one and a half. So it's a little bit more than one and a half times larger. Number two, write the ratios of all the congruent sides. This is called a statement of proportionality. Statement of proportionality. Because what's happening is that the, all the side lengths become what's called proportional. So if your scale factor is congruent or the same, I'm sorry, equal for all three sides, then you've got um, proportionate side lengths. So all you need to do is just match up corresponding side lengths. So let's start with RS and XY. 
that proportion is equal to RT and XZ. Those are corresponding side lengths. And then TS corresponds to ZY. That's what's called a statement of proportionality. Pause this video and you try. In this diagram, triangle JKL is similar, that's what that symbol means, similar to PQR. Find the scale factor from JKL to PQR, JKL to PQR, so we're, we're gaining in size. Uh, we're going from smaller to larger. So we wanna do the larger one on top. So I'm gonna do a PR, whoops, ignore that, PR over JL. Again, I just picked two sides that look friendly to me. I just picked the longer sides. You could do six to nine or four to six. It won't really matter, but I'm gonna do 12 to eight. 12 divided by two is six. Eight divided by two is four. That can go again. Six divided by two is three. And four divided by two is two. So three halves, which is exactly 1.5. So the scale factor is 1.5. List the pairs of congruent angles. So when you increase and decrease triangles uh, in size, it does not change their angles. So they remain equal, actually equal. So let's do corresponding for P. So angle P is equal to angle J. Angle R corresponds to angle L. Sorry, that L looks funny. And then angle Q is equal to angle K. And then you're going to write a statement of proportionality. I'm just going to pick PR to start with again. Whoa, I keep doing that. PR, ignore that extra bit. PR is to JL. And then PQ is to JK. And QR is to KL. As long as you're in, like, you can't switch the J's and the K's on the top. Like, all the triangle side lengths have to be in the same positions. All right, these two figures are similar, and it says you find the unknown length of EF using a statement of proportionality. So we're trying to find the length of EF, which is labeled with X. So all we need to do is compare it to its corresponding side and then use two other corresponding sides to set up a proportion. You don't need to do all three. You can just set up two at a time. It just needs to be two. So I like to start with my unknown, so X corresponds to 30. And now you just pick two other sides that are friendly. We, we, we could say 15 is to 18 or 20 is to 24 and you'd get the same answer, but you have to go the same direction. So if I go from X to 30, then I have to go from 15 to 18. They have to be divided in the same direction, otherwise the proportions don't work. So now we have a fraction equal to a fraction, and you may forget this, but the best way and most efficient way to solve a fraction equal to a fraction is to cross multiply. So we're gonna do x times 18, which is 18x, and then 30 times 15, and 30 times 15 is 450. Divide by 18, and we get x equals 25. Then you can check and see if that seems reasonable. Yeah, that seems reasonable. If this is 24 and 30, then 20 and 25 seems reasonable. Sample number five, those two triangles are similar and we'd like to find the altitude of PS. The altitude, another word for altitude is height of PS. So we're looking for this length right here from P to S. So what we do is we split it into two triangles. So I can see on the left triangle, I've got an X and a six, or I could say X and 12. And then on my right triangle, I've got a 20 and an eight, or I could say 20 and 16. You get to choose in this case. So always start with your unknown. X corresponds to 20. And then we can say uh, the six is to eight, or 12 is to 16, whichever you want to do is fine. Uh, but X is, to, X is to 20 as 6 is to 8 is what I think I'm going to do. I think would be good. You could go the other direction as well. Like you could set this up as saying X is to 6 
as 20 is to 8, you have several different ways to set it up and you'll get the same answer. So x times 8 is 8x. 20 times 6 is 120. Divide by 8 and x equals 15. So ps equals 15. All right, pause this video and try these next two on your own. All right, our last example. A town plans to build a new swimming pool. An Olympic pool is rectangular with a length of 50 meters and a width of 25 meters. The new pool will be similar in shape, similar, but will have a length of 40 meters. Find the perimeter of an Olympic pool and a new pool. So we can do the Olympic pool right away. So I know this is 25 meters and this is 50 meters. So if we wanted the perimeter I'm going to call it of old. So we want the perimeter of old. Uh, 25 and 25 is 50. 50 and 50 is 100. So our um, old perimeter is 150 meters. So now we can draw a little sketch of our new one. It's going to be similar in shape, but instead it's going to be 40 meters long. But I'm not exactly sure how long the width is to help us get this perimeter. So these two figures are similar to each other, so we can set up a proportion to figure out what the new length will be. So x is compared to 25, as 40 is to 50. 50x equals 1,000. Divide by 50, and x equals 20. So this new length is 20 meters. So we've got a 20, and a 20, and a 40 and a 40, so our perimeter of new. 20 and 20 is 40, 40 and 40 is 80, 40 and 80 is 120 meters. Thank you.